This is the higher tier section on variation, inheritance and evolution. For the higher tier, you need to know a bit more about variation and inheritance in plants and animals. First, variation. Variation within a species can be caused by environmental or genetic factors. Environmental factors determine how an organism grows and develops, particularly in the case of asexual reproduction, which otherwise produces identical offspring. Genetic variation occurs through sexual reproduction because genes are inherited from different parents. Mutation is another cause of variation. A mutation is a random mistake in the copying of chromosomes during cell division. They mostly occur naturally, through ionising radiation, and some chemicals may increase the occurrence of mutations. Mutations are of two types, gene mutations and chromosome mutations. The next clip explains gene mutations. Some genes are stronger than others. They're called dominant genes, and the weak ones are called recessive. Dominant genes tend to hide the effect of recessive genes, sometimes hiding them completely. To complicate things further, very, very occasionally the genetic machinery makes a mistake. A chemical mix-up creates a mutation, a new gene that never existed before. Sometimes a mutation is good for a species, but other times it creates problems. Every one of these dog breeds is associated with an inherited disease caused by recessive mutant genes. It happens because of their breeding. In nature, all kinds of dogs would mate with each other, so it's unlikely that two parents mating would both pass on the same recessive gene to a puppy. But to keep pedigree breeds pure, only a small number of dogs are mated together. Inbreeding is the result. Pedigree dogs might look attractive, but they're much more likely to inherit recessive genes that can lead to crippling disease. Small mutations, where a gene is slightly altered, contribute to variations between generations and can lead to changes in characteristics that can be damaging or beneficial. Gene mutations are usually recessive, so their effect is often hidden by dominant genes, whilst in chromosome mutations, a major change occurs which can affect part of, or a whole, chromosome. Down syndrome is caused by the presence of an extra chromosome. Next, more about inheritance. Before we start, here are some of the key terms you need to be sure of. Chromosomes are long, complex chains of DNA within the nucleus of each cell. Genes are short chunks of chromosomal DNA, which are responsible for particular characteristics. Gametes are male or female sex cells, such as a sperm, pollen or egg cell. Alleles are different forms of the same gene for a characteristic. In the Foundation Biology program, we saw how Gregor Mendel discovered that certain characteristics of pea plants were dominant and appeared more frequently in offspring, and that others were recessive and appeared less frequently. In the case of Mendel's peas, the pink flower characteristic is dominant, while the white flower characteristic is recessive. The dominant pigment characteristic, pink, is shown as a capital P, while that for a recessive pigment characteristic, white, is shown with a small p. Mendel started with pure pink flowers, with both alleles for flower pigment the same, capital P, capital P. A white flower plant must have two small p alleles for the recessive characteristic to show. The diagram shows that when these two varieties are crossed with each other, every possible combination of alleles in this first generation contains one capital P allele. Because capital P is dominant, all the offspring will produce pink flowers, even though they carry the recessive small p genes as well. They're known as first-generation hybrids. 
when two of these hybrids, both with the capital P small p genes, are crossed with each other, three of the four possible combinations still contain the dominant capital P allele. Only one in four offspring contains two recessive small p alleles, which means only that flower will come out white. Dominant and recessive characteristics always occur in this 3 to 1 ratio when hybrids are crossed. Now let's look at how the sex of an offspring is inherited in humans. Human cells have 46 chromosomes in their nucleus, 22 pairs plus an XX in the female, or an X and shorter Y in the male. Sex is determined by those X and Y chromosomes. This is how it works. All female eggs are XX, but half the male sperm are X and half are Y. If an X sperm fertilises the X egg, then the baby will have XX chromosomes and be a girl. If a Y sperm fertilises the X egg, then the baby will have XY chromosomes and be a boy. Half the male sperm being X and half being Y explains why the human population is roughly half and half, male and female. X and Y chromosomes carry other genes on them, besides those determining sex, which cause other characteristics to be inherited. Homologous chromosomes carry genes for the same characteristics at the same place on the chromosomes, so every characteristic has two genes for it. However, because the Y chromosome is smaller, X and Y chromosomes do not carry all the same genes. So men have only one of the genes carried on the X chromosomes, but women have both. For example, one of the genes carried on the X chromosome is for blood clotting. The dominant gene, capital H, clots blood, while the recessive gene, small h, causes haemophilia. Men carry only one allele for blood clotting, because the Y chromosome is shorter and is missing this gene. So if men inherit the recessive gene, small h, it will be expressed as haemophilia, because there isn't another dominant gene, capital H, to override it. Sons born to women who carry the recessive, small h gene, have a 50-50 chance of developing the disease. As well as carrying the characteristics we inherit from our parents, genes can pass on any inherited diseases that may run in the family. Some inherited diseases are caused by faulty genes. Some inherited diseases are sex-linked. Huntington's chorea is a disease caused by a dominant gene. If either parent has the gene, there is a 50% chance that the offspring will inherit it. Cystic fibrosis is a disease caused by a recessive gene. It can be carried from generation to generation, masked by other dominant genes. But if two carriers mate, there is a 25% chance of the disease surfacing. Genes have complex structures. And for higher tier papers, you'll need to know something about DNA, the material from which genes are formed. DNA contains the instructions for making proteins. As you watch the next clip, note down how the genetic information is carried by DNA. Each cell contains a nucleus which holds 23 pairs of chromosomes. All the information which is needed to make a human being is contained within these. They're made up of two strands of DNA twisted into this spiral shape. And along these spiral strands are found the genes, our own personal genetic codes. A DNA molecule is shaped like a double helix. A long strand of DNA contains many pairs of smaller molecules called bases. If you could unwind the double helix, the pairs of bases would be arranged like the rungs of a ladder. There are four different bases called C, G, A and T for short. These are the four letters of the genetic alphabet and they can be arranged in any order. You can think of this arrangement as a genetic code 
containing all the instructions for making a living organism. There might be billions of letters. Genes are made of deoxyribonucleic acid, hence DNA. DNA molecules are very large polymers and are coiled up into the shape of a double helix. The smaller monomers that make up the DNA polymer are called nucleotides. Each nucleotide is made up of a phosphate group, a deoxyribose sugar and a nitrogenous base. The phosphate and sugar units alternate to make up the two sides of the DNA ladder. The bases are either adenine, thiamine, cystosine and guanine, referred to as A, T, C and G. Each of these bases is a different size and shape, so A will only fit next to T and C will only fit next to G. A and T and C and G are called complementary bases because they always pair together. These pairs of bases make up the rungs of the DNA ladder. So the final DNA structure looks something like this, the famous double helix shape. The sequence of bases in the DNA provides the code that determines what kind of cell is produced. This is how it works. Cells are made from different protein which are made up from different combinations of amino acids. The code for a particular amino acid is a triplet of three bases, such as GGC or TCC. Each amino acid has a different code. For example, GGC is the code for the amino acid glycine, wherever it occurs in all living things. And AAT is the code for leucine, whether it's in humans, sunflowers or bacteria. It's the sequence of triplets in the DNA that determines the sequence of amino acids in a protein. In recent years, there's been a massive leap forward in our understanding of genetics. Cloning is the process of making identical copies of an individual. Genetic engineering is artificially changing the genes in the DNA to create specific proteins and therefore specific characteristics. Both these techniques raise ethical issues. First, what are the advantages and disadvantages of cloning? Some advantages of cloning are that it creates duplicate animals or plants with advantageous characteristics, such as high yields. Some disadvantages of cloning are lack of hybrid vigour, because exact copies of organisms means any weakness remains unchanged. It's important to remember that, at the moment, even if it were possible, attempting to clone duplicate human beings is illegal. Next, what is genetic engineering? The next clip explains. In the same way that I can cut recording tape and then join it together to insert a particular piece of music I want, geneticists are developing ways of isolating a specific gene and inserting it into the genetic material of another organism. This is genetic engineering. Christine, what is this gorgeous chick in common with genetic engineering? Well, we're developing a way of putting new genes into chickens, genes that they wouldn't normally have. And it, in the future, it may be possible to put human genes into chickens. Why do you do this? Well, if we put a human gene into a chicken, it will make a human protein. And some human proteins can be used as drugs to treat illnesses. The new gene is injected into the minute dark patch on the yolk when the embryo is just a single cell. In the laboratory, they're able to do this long before the egg would normally have been laid. After the egg is injected, it's incubated. And if the experiment succeeds, then as the cells divide and the embryo grows, all the cells in the developing chick will contain the one new gene, as well as the thousands and thousands of other genes that make a chicken. We have a cockerel that does have the new gene and we've used him to breed a whole flock of birds that all contain the new gene. Why is this useful to people? Well, if we have a flock of birds, uh, the hens will hopefully lay down in their eggs human proteins that will be a cheap and convenient source of drugs to treat illnesses that haven't been able to be treated before. 
So genetic engineering can create new characteristics helpful to humans, such as pest-resistant crops. On the other hand, people are concerned that we don't know what the long-term side effects might be of genetically modified organisms being at large in the world. Creating specific characteristics in animals and plants is not new. Selective breeding can happen naturally or artificially. For hundreds of years, humans have used selective breeding to change the characteristics of animals and plants over several generations. In the natural world, only the fittest individuals survive to go on to breed. It's nature's way of ensuring that only the genes and characteristics of these fittest individuals get passed to the next generation. Artificial selection deliberately selects particular characteristics for breeding for other reasons, such as agriculture, food production or economic gain. That's the end of the higher tier section on variation, inheritance and evolution. Mm-hmm.